Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Quests, Heroes of Circado, a game that plays one to six players by Solar Flare Games that can play up to three hours. It's a campaign-based cooperative game in which you and up to five other friends will be venturing into the realm of Circado, where you'll be attempting to defeat monsters, solve traps, and of course, unique riddles or puzzles. It's kind of a choose-your-own-adventure mixed with an RPG similar to D&D, utilizing the Roll20 style system, in which you'll be testing your different skills, whether it be strength, dexterity, or intellect, uh, attempting to roll and combat different enemies and things that you're going to have to deal with throughout the way. Uh, additionally, too, it's going to have its own little uh, lineup of text, as well as choices that you'll get to make throughout the game. Uh, choose a character or characters, and begin by drawing cards for everybody, flipping them over one at a time and dealing with them. The monsters could involve you fighting by yourself, or up to fighting with all of the players in the group. Will you be able to go through the entire map and then of course defeat the main boss at the end with multiple different scenarios and of course a campaign mission. Uh, there's going to be tons of different options for everyone. Let's take a look down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, how it plays, and then I will give you my review for the game. Welcome to the game quests and currently I have this set up for one to six players and to begin the game you're simply going to set up the board which is relatively easy. Place all your health, your gold, and your armor tokens in the spaces indicated. The treasure is going to be in the middle here. This is the communal pool which you'll get three random allocated potions from the pool and then you're going to place the rest of them in this area here provided for you will be the symbol of where they go uh, additionally the board is going to tell you uh, when you discard or vault a card the different locations you're going to come across and the starting one that i have here set up for the deck additional party treasure pools where you'll be placing down your party stuff these are what your potions can do based on what you roll and over here is the peddler he's basically a merchant that you're going to come across throughout the game, allowing you to buy and sell stuff. Uh, you're also going to be getting different characters. I have six here, but there are more in the game, so this is basically just kind of like a scenario, a starter up to show you kind of what it looks like and how it plays. Every character has a unique starting item, and it says starter, and has the symbol of the different characters located in the top left-hand side. Each of them, as you can see, is going to have art, the symbol, this word that says starter, to know that you start with it, the type of card that it is, and what it does, and how you can utilize it on your turn to benefit you throughout the gameplay. Some items will actually have armor indicated on the bottom right, and if they do, place the number of armor cubes based on the number represented on the bottom left next to the armor symbol. Uh, additionally, of course, the character models. The characters are going to come with their own unique cards. They're going to come with their HP, the type of character they are, and of course their stats, whether it be strength, intellect, dexterity, or wisdom. And then on the back is the character's story, explaining the character's background, which is nice and kind of ties into the world of like a D&D style campaign. Uh, you're going to set these guys up in a circular area or circular fashion around the game board because you're going to be utilizing them that way. And then of course you have the starting player token. You'll go ahead and choose a player uh, uh, to go ahead and start the game off. Um, and you'll have a 20 sided die as well. Make sure you put it somewhere within reach of all players. This is going to be your bread and butter for the game. Set the boss for the specific world that you're doing aside so that you can use it later. And of course, you're going to need this. This is the demo adventure that I have, which is why it's not looking like a booklet, but it will. And you'll be reading through this. And as you read through it, you're going to be choosing to play with a certain location that it tells you to play with. So in this case, we're playing with the coast. So I've placed it over here. Uh, we're also then going to go ahead and continue reading the story. It'll tell us whether we have to like meet up with a, a, a fancy trader. Um, and then, of course, we're going to have these entries, which we'll use for the portion of the game in which we need to choose our own adventures. And I'll go ahead and set this aside because I think you understand that we will be using them later. And the game, it's fairly simple. Every character is going to have their HP represented by cubes placed next to them so that you know which character has what cubes um, and or what health. And then you're going to give every single player one of these coast cards. These cards are going to represent monsters, events, and traps that you're going to come across throughout the game. And if you ever run across an event or a trap, you'll fulfill that, do whatever it says, and draw a new card. Everybody on every round is going to fight a monster and after you fought a monster in the game then you're going to progress to the next round eventually facing up against the big boss uh, when you start off and you flip over a card with the first player you'll come across a monster and here we have a coastal goblin which tells you the type of monster it is the stat that it's weak against uh, and then of course what happens when it dies it'll get vaulted and then his specific conditions whether it be a victory or whether you win or whether you lose if you lose all players active will lose two health and 
an active player is a character is associated with the monsters. And the characters associated with the monsters is going to be based on the eyes on the card. So with two, three, four, and five eyes, uh, that will determine who is going to be active. And it'll be basically adjacent, and then adjacent, and then everybody. For instance, this one here is a two-eyed monster, while this one over here is the boss, and all players are going to fight against him individually. Whereas maybe another monster is going to have, let's see if I can find one, a three-eyed monster here. In which instead of choosing between one or the other player, this one will let you choose both players to work with you when fighting the monsters. Or here is a four-eyed monster. This one is the manticore. Um, so that's kind of how those guys work when you work with other players. You'll choose your get stat score that works best against the monster. You'll add that stat score, any bonuses you might have on your items, whether you have a potion that you can use, and whatever that number might be, whether it be like maybe let's say six. Now then you're going to take this 20-sided die and you're going to roll it. And you're going to try and get, there's a 19 for you, your number plus the die roll and any potions or items you might have minus this character and if you have more you defeat it and gain the bonus in this case here it's going to be two loot tokens a stat potion and one quickness potion loot po uh, tokens are very useful allowing you to gather more loot and of course potions are going to be allowing you to utilize them throughout the game and you're going to only use two per turn for your player for, for, with your player so make sure you use them wisely defeat the character vault it then move on to the next player and flip over and this one here we come across is a dark cat and it's an entry entry and it's a zero zero three well you go ahead and take a look at your booklet here and then you're going to find entry zero zero three in which case we come across this here and it says it has been abandoned for some reason will you find out why and then you have options and based on your options you might have to roll dice you might just get a specific bonus or you might suffer some type of penalty and that's all based on what you choose throughout the game so think of you know the old goosebumps books where you choose your own adventure you'll discard this card once you've utilized it by placing it in the vault, flip over a new card until you find a monster, and then you'll deal with it based on its eyeballs, based on its stat, and its victory or loss condition. If you fail to deal with it, then you're going to have it move to the next player in turn order, and it'll keep going around until you deal with it or a player collapses and dies. And if that happens, that's game over. And once you do defeat it, bam, you vault it, and then you gain the benefits and you move on to the player that is next without a revealed card. Once again, fight the monster, rinse and repeat. The only other thing I didn't mention is that there are trap cards. If I can find one here. They basically do the same thing as, uh, here's one, spores. I mean, they simply do similar things to uh, events, in which case you're basically going to choose something, an option based on the story mode. And of course, you'll also have to draw a card, revealing a new monster after you complete the trap or of course the event. And then eventually you'll deal with the boss here. And the way the boss works is pretty simple. You have two different options, whether it be physical or mental. Physical is dealt with by strength and dexterity, and mental is dealt with the other two stats. It has a number here, and you're going to try and defeat the number, which is its HP. You're going to roll your die plus your potions the same way you do a normal battle, but the difference between your number and the number that you're choosing to deal with is going to be the amount of damage you deal minus uh, whatever critiques or requirements it has in the rulebook. For instance, this guy might be only able to take five damage, regardless of the number uh, difference between your number and this number here. And then, of course, he'll counterattack. And what's interesting about boss monsters here is that they're going to have their own unique fighting stats and, and like different things that you can do, your loss and your win, and the boss fights are all going to function differently. I had an opportunity to play this game just as it is, and, of course, online, uh, so I got to see some different bosses and whatnot, and I can say that they have a variety of different styles and effects and abilities that you're going to deal with throughout the game. And that's basically it. You deal with the monster, save the day, move on to the next world, and continue playing Heroes. Let's go ahead and come up for my review. So as you know, this game here is obviously a prototype. So what I have here is cutouts to show you kind of approximately what it's going to look like as far as the artwork goes, but I'm going to be guessing it's going to have much better quality, obviously. Uh, the game has a multitude of different characters, and I only have six here to show you, but there are additional ones and of course the storyline there's tons more story in this game as you go ahead and start the game off you'll be flipping over the cards you'll be interacting with the different monsters choosing your stat rolling die and utilizing potions to defeat the monster stat value and thusly going around the table and completing objectives whether it be traps or objectives or of course the main baddies themselves uh, and of course the boss at the end of the campaign you use your wits and of course a little bit of luck when it comes to rolling die 
and to mitigate you'll have to use potions and increase your stats with items that you find along the way. What's unique about this game, because I've seen a lot of games that involve the style D20 system, is the fact that there is a cooperative slash storytelling element to the game where you're going to go through the game and make choices. And the choices influence your stats and the different aspects of the story. A lot of humor is added to the game, and all of the characters have their own unique backstory. Another interesting thing with this game, too, is it comes with a ton of different characters and, of course, bosses that are influenced by a lot of the people or creators' uh, friends. Uh, so, just as a way of letting this out, uh, I am in the game, and so is my wife, so take that as you will, um, and a bunch of other people in the industry as well, which I think is actually kind of cool and might entice some people to take, take, take a look additionally at the game if they want to see their uh, favorite content creators uh, or battle against them, in my case. And Callie is actually one of the characters that you get to choose to play with. She's actually uh, the, the druid here. Uh, so let's let's talk about the artwork. Uh, first of all, I enjoy the artwork. It kind of reminds me of like a classic style uh, RPG slash dungeon crawl style game. Uh, similar in the lines of like a modern day hero quest in which you're going to be utilizing them and their weapons and items to progress the storyline. Uh, my favorite part about this game is really the story. I really enjoy that. I, I in fact really like that there is a ton of story elements. I just have the very base sample copy for the game and even in this one there's quite a bit just to get you through to see like a little taste of the game and the choices that you make that define your character as you play the game. Uh, and that's excellent. Uh, I like the fact that you're going to start off with a unique item for your own character and of course you can have unique pooled items that you can gather throughout the game as well. There's an area for pooled items, an area for pooled gold, and of course your potions. And there's a ton of potions. There's nine different potions in the game. Uh, all of them will reflect your stats or allow you to re-roll or gain more additional health. And you guys kind of have to work together to choose what you want to use, when you want to use it, and who you want to give it to based on what you acquire throughout the game. Cooperation is key in this game, and there's no one master player because everyone has to decide uh, a bunch of different choices throughout the game, whether you want to help the friendly goblin or stab him in the back and steal some gold, or maybe you want to uh, try and climb out of an ooze pit or dive down to find that shiny little golden item hidden down below. Those are examples of things that could be in the game. I have no idea. I just kind of made them up on the spot. But anyway, the artwork is cool. I also do like the style of gameplay, how the board feels present for everybody, and the characters kind of all surround it, and it all plays in this board that utilizes the cards for each of the different areas that you're going to be going through throughout the game, dealing with all the monsters, and then finally fighting the big bad boss. And the boss fight is different than fighting the monsters, where typically you're just trying to get that stat value without taking the damage. The boss is always going to counterattack based on uh, how much, if it has health or not, and the difference in health that it can lose is based on a principal amount, and then of course the difference between your high stat plus roll and potions minus whatever his stat is. So if you roll a 19 and he's got 15, you do 4 damage. If you, if you roll the 20 and you had like plus 7, you had like a 27, and he was a 15, he's still only going to take maybe 5 damage. That might be his capped base uh, damage that you're going to take throughout the game. Uh, so this is a story-based game. It's also cooperative. If you don't like cooperative games, this one's not going to be for you. It's also a longer game. So as you're playing this game, you're going to notice that it's going to be progressively more intense as the game goes on. Uh, there's a lot of storyline that you're going to be reading throughout the game and choices you'll need to make. And there's a lot of decision-making between each player's turn. So just keep that in mind. And of course, it's not necessarily exactly a dungeon crawl because it's mainly going to be a social game based on the principles of rolling dice and utilizing what you have in front of you. The characters that you're going to be coming across, whether it be a traitor, whether it be a helpful monk, or even the monsters that you're going to deal with may fight you solely or you'll work together with your friends in attempting to defeat the monster. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Uh, I like the art, I like the style of gameplay, it's something unique that I haven't seen before with some added things that I have have seen before, and of course the added storyline is really cool. It's a longer game, it's a cooperative game, and it is uh, obviously going to be involving fighting to some extent. It's very family friendly though, all the artwork is very well thought out, and uh, very well worked for the family as well. It's really easy to learn how to play this game and set the game up, and really easy to understand the storyline, and you know, younger kids can go through this game as well with you, so if you want something for kids that are going to be able to understand um, a basic idea of like a dungeon crawl, or want to kind of 
jump into D&D, this is a nice starting point for that, with a unique storyline all of its own. Regardless though, if you're interested in taking a look at the game, you can check a look down below, link in the description. The game is on Kickstarter and you'll have a chance to pick that up. And tell me what you guys think down below in the comment section. Is this something for you? Let us know. All right, outro. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Quests. If you're interested in the game, like I said, there's a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button, and of course the bell notification button so you can see more videos just like this one. We do a ton of content for Kickstarter games Monday through Friday. You can check us out. We will be having a hiatus for the next uh, two weeks or so, but I'll be trying to put out some extra additional content while we are on that hiatus. I'm moving to a new location, meaning a new studio and a bunch of new, um, new things for our live stream and all that good stuff. So it's going to be exciting stuff. Of course, updates for Moonshell. We have seen the video of the manufactured, um, I guess the, the sample copy of the game, which should be arriving to us within the week. And I'll have an update on Kickstarter for you guys to see all that content. Uh, very exciting. The campaign's uh, backer, backer kit is going to be closing sometime in the next couple days. So last chance to kind of pick up the game if you're still interested in doing so. And if you haven't filled out your form, make sure you do so so we can make sure to get that game to you guys. Uh, Patreon members, thank you so much for supporting us. If you want to, you can support us down below. Link in the description for a buck a month. It helps us out with our giveaways and other fun content that we produce every week just for you guys and join our Discord. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to questing in the world of Sarkata with you next time.